Welcome to my store. Yeah. Okay. It didn't go on. This is how I open the bags. I just take it, hold it onto the side, and you just take your knife and you stick it into the slot and ride it along. See, this way now, you just take it like that, and you got the flap and a flap, and you just open her up. Okay? Whereas this one here, you have to kind of, well, this one actually bent a little bit when he was ripping it, so it was easier to grab. But if you take a pair of scissors and cut this across, these two pieces will lie really flat together. All right, so we're gonna now get into a little bit of the uh, how to culture uh, rotifers. Um, the first thing that the, the sort of the safety cautionary tip for the rotifers is make sure you do everything that you're gonna do with your phytoplankton first. Get it out of the way, and if all possible, make sure that your rotifers are in one room and your phyto is in another room. One rotifer in a phyto culture will wipe you out completely, and they will grow really, really fast. Oh yeah, they like eat it. Yes. Um, so we've removed all of the phyto cultures from here. Um, we're going to deal strictly with the, the rotifers at this point. Um, in our facility, we actually have different colored scrubs. Uh, we've got green scrubs for phyto. We've got blue scrubs for when we're dealing with rotifers. So at least corresponds with our, uh, our coating system on our okay, bags. Yeah. Uh, that way we can make sure that we've done everything that we possibly can. We've removed our, physically removed our clothing to make sure that we don't end up with a cross-contamination. Um, always work up the food chain, don't work down. Phytoplankton yeah. is the bottom of the food chain. Same as if you get the yeah. brine shrimp and they get into your rotifer culture, they'll eat up all your rotifers. Absolutely. So, the, uh, the blue bags are uh, our rotifers. Um, rotifer cultures, contrary to belief, um, are probably one of the simplest things you can do um, at home. The limiting factor for a successful rotifer culture are two things, food and water quality. Um, as they reproduce, if you've got optimal conditions, you've got fantastic water quality, you've got uh, great oxygen uh, saturation through them, and you've got enough food, uh, the rotifer will get up into the you know, tens of thousands or the thousands per milliliter um, and they will readily consume every ounce of phytoplankton that you have. So make sure that you have a solid belt of phyto. If it's homegrown, make sure you've got as much as you think that you need and then double that. Okay. Um, it's a lot easier to go into a store and buy obviously our products because you've got a, a great source uh, on the spot available to you at all times. Um, as far as culturing, it's simple. Take a bag of rotor first and add it to any sort of bucket, Tupperware, bottle, whatever you've got on hand. If they're not specific. Do you have to be that sterile? No. Just wash it out? Wa wa out. Wash it out. You can, uh, you don't, uh, I know people who just use uh, tap water, add some salt, throw it in the bucket, and away they go. What's the going to do with you go for? Um, the bloaters prefer the 1.0, 2.0, uh, again, slightly on the, the, the less salty side. Um, you're not going to worry about uh, osmotic shock throwing them in your tank. They actually are quite hardy uh, that way. The, most people's tank, tanks in here are the 1.024 range anyways. Yeah. Um, we've never had any issues. Well, what I do here is I just use my tank water, uh, yeah. change a third of it every day, and that keeps the culture fresh because yeah. there's no filter in it. Yeah. I mean, from, from a cross-contamination perspective, it's really hard to cross-contaminate water first. Um, you can literally take your tank water, um, and actually in, in the simplest form, that's the easiest way to do it to keep your costs down. Take tank water, run it through a coffee strainer just to make sure you've got some of the bigger chunks out of your uh, 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 out of your water, capturing your larger, larger bugs, goes right into a five gallon bucket. So if you've got some uh, mice and shrimp in there, with that... Uh... They'll delete your rotifers, but the rotifers will, out, will outgrow your mice. Okay, so they won't wipe you out. Um, certainly, in, in the beginning, when you've got sort of that ideal water uh, chemistry, uh, you get doubling times every three, four hours on one of those. Okay. Um, so if you're starting off with a couple hundred thousand of them every, you know, over the course of the day, you are quite exponential than the amount of, uh, of, of water for it by the next day. In a, in a solid, uh, you know, culture, you're, you can actually do 50 to 60 percent harvests every day, and they will bounce back 100 percent. Yeah. Um, it's actually, the, depending on, on the density of your, you actually should do um, between a 30 and a 50% uh, harvest every day or every other day um, because the females only produce uh, so many eggs and then once they're produced, the eggs, they stop producing. So you're actually harvesting out 
all the females that aren't producing eggs and leaving the ones that are in there at the math where it's be as long as you're harvesting 30 to 50% every, every, every day to every other day, um, you actually have the most fertile of uh, rotifers in the system to make sure that they are constantly reproducing and you don't have where the swings. And what do you do? So you're going away for a week and a half? Put them in the refrigerator. You think uh, like a whole bucket or just uh, stay, take, take a jug? Take, 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 take a jug out. Um, you can put a little, little bit of uh, aeration in it or you can let them, let them be. Um, what? So you can, you can just put, put them as is in, you know, in a container, uh, put them in the fridge. Um, there again, there you're going to slow them to keep that metabolic rates down. Um, and just really slow them down so they're not reproducing as quickly. They're not uh, consuming the food that you put in there. Um, and then when you come back at the end of the, the week and a half, two week mark, you just get them back up to room temperature, give them a little bit of food, some clean water, and away you go. If you were going away for like two days, three days, yep. and you took, uh, maybe all of this, took it out and add that much and then just add green water to it, would that work as well? That would work as well. So that basically you don't have to wait for your culture to come back up. If you know you're coming back in three days, just have it so that uh, lots of food in it and that way it won't go clear before you get back, but there won't be too much food to uh, suffocate them or anything. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so again, so from a, how do you, how do you deal with the water first? We sell 53 micron screens. Um, that one. Got a slice. So, from a, if you're just doing starting a, a rotor for culture, obviously you can take the contents of the bag, dump it right into your culture vessel, and, and you're on your way. If you're using our products for a food perspective, um, we do recommend that they are strained. Um, the only reason we recommend that they're strained is because I don't know if you're adding this to a five gallon tank or if you're adding this to a 500 gallon tank. Uh, they are live organisms, they are still reproducing in the bank, albeit slowly because they're refrigerated, um, so they are still producing waste um, and the water quality itself is going to be high nitrates and high ammonia. Um, if you get a bag, we, we date all of our bags um, two weeks uh, from when they're packaged on the water first. Um, and uh, if you're getting a bag that's uh, at that sort of at that maximum of the best before date, uh, you open it up, you are going to smell that ammonia, that, that, that heavy uh, the ammonia smell, just because the water quality is, is actually pretty bad. Does the water quality tell the rotifers? Uh, it, are it, they it's slow. They're, they're, they're robust enough. Um, it just slows their ability to reproduce down. Uh, so, from from a, a store perspective, if anybody wants, if they're breeding at home, they're in a pinch. Getting a bag just before it's about to expire actually does give you more rotifers than a fresh bag because they've had two weeks to reproduce in the bag. 